42 blocks aren't enough for you? Well, have you ever thought about adding Obama block, or Rickroll block, or Sus block, or Putin block? <laughs> I know it's kind of ridiculous, but the point I'm trying to make here, it's a lot of fun and really not that hard, because all you need to do to add your own blocks and scrap mechanic is just edit some text files, and maybe some images if you want some custom textures as well. Well, and if you're scared of making your first mod, I have a little piece of advice for you. Just, just do, do it! it! All right, so to make our first mod, we first need to find the mod tool, because Steam is such a hot pile of garbage sometimes. Because the mod tool is a tool and not a game, we first need to add it to the list. Now, luckily, Steam just gives you a hundred tools you'll never need in your entire lifetime. But luckily, we can also just search for the mod tool. Now that we finally found the mod tool, I would just add it to favorites, because this saves you buns of searching later. And don't be confused, the mod tool looks exactly like Scrap Mechanic. <laughs> All right, let's fire it up. Now, this looks a little scary, but you can just completely ignore this console. What we are more interested in is this GUI stuff. And this is so easy to use because there's just a big fat button that says new mod. And because we want to add new blocks, we just select blocks and parts. Then we just need to name our mod and we can click OK. And now we've got a new mod. Next, just select the mod in your list. And there's not much else we can do in here. So let's go into the mod folder. Hmm, look at this fancy Windows dark theme. Now, there's a bunch of stuff in here, but all we really need to do is change one file. And this one file, which adds all the parts, is located under Objects, Database, Shapesets, and Blocks.json. Now, if you don't have a fancy editor installed like I do, we well, can just open it with Notepad. Well, but for now, there isn't really anything in this file. Is it just me, or does this thing kind of look like a... Anyway, luckily for us, the devs also included in blocksexample.txt, which we can just right click and it opens like this. And now I welcome you to your first lesson of programming. Just copy the crap out of it. Just, just copy the data of this file and paste it into our blocks.json like this. Remember to save it first. Time to test our mod. For that, just create a new creative world because you don't want to screw up your existing ones and make sure you select the mods before you actually click play. And now we're getting a warning which just says that our mod isn't published yet. But don't worry, I'll guess how to publish your mod at the end of the video. And now if we go to mod parts, we actually added a new block. Isn't that just amazing? <laughs> All we had to do was just copy paste one file into another file. All right, let's have some fun with it, shall we? Um. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we, we haven't generated the icons yet. That's why it looks empty. I'll show you how to fix that later. Look at this one. Well, this is actually like a perfect green screen. Oh my god, we can actually paint it. All right, so if you just want to have a block without any textures, there you go. It's that easy. You see all the properties the block has, like weight, durability, friction, and buoyancy? They are ours now. Now, if you paid any attention, which you probably didn't, you would have noticed that we added some properties like color and density to our block. So we can easily just modify some of these properties. For the color, for example, we need a hex code. How the hell do I get a hex code of a color? Welcome to the second rule of programming. If you don't know it, just Google it. If you Google for color picker, Google has this nice built-in color picker. Now we could just, for example, look for shade of magenta that we want to use for a block, maybe like this, and all we now need to do is just copy the hex code from here. Just make sure you don't copy the hashtag as well. And remember, save your changes. So if we launch the game again, you see that our blocks are still white. That's because the color property is just the default color, so if I place new blocks, they now have a shade of magenta. Also, if I unpaint the previous blocks, they'll also turn magenta. But what if we had like maximum weight block or zero friction block? But the problem with these properties is that our example is a little bit outdated. To change that stuff, we need to add new properties to this file. First, we need to end the last property with a comma. Then we can just tap a bunch of times for the formatting. We need quotation marks for the name. Our new property is called ratings. Then we need columns. And these weird parentheses I don't know the name of. What is the name? Ah, so apparently that's a brace or curly brackets. Wh who calls this an arrow team? Slash, also called as Solidus or Virgula. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> anyway, um, back to this thing. So in these curly brackets, we want even more properties. Yeah, I know properties within properties. It's kind of like Inception. <laughs> Well, what should I pretend? I don't know all of this crap either. So let's just copy paste the correct stuff in here. So within these 
curly brackets, you want density, durability, friction and buoyancy. And always make sure you have a comma at the end of a property. Except for the last one. And if you're paying attention, which you probably aren't, uh, you would notice that there's this extra comma at the end. Which violates the one rule I told you. And you see, we screwed up and the game gives us an error. And now this is the reason why just a single comma can screw up an entire program. But anyway, don't worry if you screw anything up here, the game will tell you what's wrong anyway. So now if we take a look at the properties, you see that weight, durability and friction is at maximum. So not even a farm bot can destroy a new mysterious block. Would you please see- I mean, I, th I think you get the point, uh, it's indestructible. Um, unlike me, I have feelings and stuff. And let's have a look at the friction, because if I hit the <laughs> concrete, you see how far it flies. And it- it's concrete. And if I instead kick this block, you see it barely moves at all. <laughs> That's friction 10 for you. But if we change durability to 1 and friction to 1, we have the exactly opposite effect. So now if we kick that bad boy, it just keeps going. <laughs> it just keeps spinning. It's literally like a piece of ice. And as you can already see with the hammer, because the durability is 1, I can just destroy it. So if we compare a block to concrete, you can see it actually is heavier. <laughs> and you can see the low friction again. So previously our block was sinking, so I just changed density to 1 and buoyancy to 2. So by theory it should float now. Wait, we could make it even more extreme than bubble plastic? Oh god, this is gonna bounce so much. Oh my god, this is just a single block of this stuff. I don't know, for some reason this is just kind of satisfying to watch. Have some fun experimenting with these values. I think they can only go from 0 to 10 though, but you can find out. And since we have density twice, I think I can just eat this thing completely. Yes, didn't break at all. Anyway, before we start changing the looks of a magenta piece of cube, we first should change the UUID. This is the ID the item has in the game. And if two parts have the same ID... If two mods have the same ID, you can't use them at the same time. And since we just copied this ID from the example file, there's a pretty good chance some lazy ass coder just yeeted that into their own mod. So we'll just need to change the ID by changing one number. Better if we change two numbers. Oh, much better, we just go to the website I'm reading a lot of the stuff on and go to the UUID section where we find a link to a UUID generator. Look at this infinite UUIDs. Let's copy that bad boy and paste it right in there. Well, but now that we changed the UUID, you can see all the blocks we placed before became this block not found block. And we also cannot load in any blueprints with the previous mod part. Better not change them and generate them right in the first place. And trust me, I did it wrong before. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but those are not just four parts. Well, I basically just created air. <laughs> this blueprint is completely empty and doesn't make any sense and we can upload it to the workshop. Well, perhaps that's why this air blueprint has over a thousand subscribers. And with this knowledge about UUIDs, we can also add a second block to our mod. Just copy the first block, paste it right behind the curly bracket from the first block, like this. And remember, the comma is very important. And we of course also need a new UUID. And voila, we have two blocks in our mod. And yeah, both can't really swim. <laughs> Just notice how much more slippery this thing is. Of course, blocks of solid color look a little boring. So let's go and change that. Time for... Textures. Yeah, I thought of a more epic transition, but then I realized that it <laughs> Actually, before we're gonna do that, I forgot one little thing. You see this physics material thing? Uh, physics materials affect the sound and particles of an object. And I think they also added new materials after the survival update, so we could make one of them sound like glass. Probably the one that keeps breaking. So if we hit the magenta now, that doesn't really sound like glass. Well, when I made the most amazing block mod, I figured out the issue with the physics material. You need to capitalize the first letter. I don't know why they changed it, but just capitalize it, and if you do it like metal, it should work. But looking at this, I didn't know there was a glass property. Let's just add this to a glass block that doesn't really have glass sounds. And... Whoa, we just made glass. Wow. Well, that's how easy it is. Oh, this is a lot more paintable than vanilla glass. Look at that, isn't that nice? Back to adding real textures to these blocks. Well, we actually added textures to this block already. The diff, ASG and NOAH are our textures. 
I'll explain what each one of those is in a sec, i.e. I have no clue what it really is and I need to look it up on the webpage anyway. Dollar sign mod data just means we start in our mod folder, which is best block mod ever. Then we just need to head to objects, textures, and as you can see this folder is empty. These textures don't even exist. Well now the funny thing about textures is they need to be multiples of two in size. And by multiples of two I mean stuff like 128, 256, 512 and so on. If you just have one pixel more, I think the game just crashes. It's a little weird, um... Well, long story short, I have no f***ing idea how to create textures from scrap. So let's just go back to rule one of programming. Copy the hell out of it. For that, we're just gonna copy working textures from the game files. To get to the game's files, simply right-click on scrap mechanic, manage, browse local files. So if we go to data... Not the Among Us folder, just ignore that one, really. Um, that never existed. We want to go to the objects folder, textures, blocks, and basically just grab the first three textures, it doesn't really matter, and copy them into our own mod. Now, while renaming these textures, make sure to keep the underscore ASG part and stuff, because I don't really want to break anything more at this point. Also, if you don't see the file extensions, you can just click view and hit this checkbox. Then we simply need to copy these names and paste them into a texture list. Yay, I also just found out the game can't even apply these textures because it will just stop at this step because these textures don't even exist. We'll just copy paste these textures, copy paste them in there and hope it finally works again. Look at this! Colored bricks at last! Oh wow! <laughs> Actually, this looks really cool. It's like a transparent brick block. Good thing this only took me half an hour. <laughs> well, if you played a lot of scrap mechanic, you notice that these blocks look a little different from the normal bricks block, even though we have the same texture. Now, the property that controls that is called tiling. A tiling of 4 means it will stretch your texture on 4x4 four four blocks. So if I just change this to 1, it should repeat the texture on every block. This means the brick block is gonna look very fractured. Oh, look at this. These bricks are so tiny. And you can also see they're a little blurry up close. You know, there's this thing on the wiki that tells you how big the tiling value should be depending on your texture resolution. So as I figured out while making my most amazing block mod, you should not use tiling 8. Because if too many blocks have tiling 8, they'll just get back to the default textures and they won't have custom textures and it's really annoying and I have no idea why this is happening. So let's get into what all of these different textures do. So we can finally make our blocks look like basically whatever we want. So to modify these files, I use a program called GIMP, or GIMP, I don't really know. Um, this is like Photoshop for the poor, because you can't afford Photoshop. Like seriously, how do they get away with the expensive pricing? Well, you don't know how to crack Photoshop from the internet, so we're just gonna use that. Now we can just open our amazing TGA files with GIMP, or GIMP. Still not really sure on that one. So the diff thing, or diffuse if I actually knew what I'm talking about, defines the base color and texture of our material. And if we take a look at it, you can see that, shockingly, the bricks are all empty. That's because everything we leave empty in here we can paint later. So for our purposes, I'm just gonna clear the whole layer and use my amazing drawing skills. So now I could just draw something in here to make this my texture and, mmm, that's a long smiley. Or I can also just change my brush to something ridiculous like a bell pepper. Mmm, pepper smiley. <laughs> Alright, let's just overwrite the file and let's see how this looks in game. Mmm, look at that amazing <laughs> bell pepper smile. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> you can also see how I have a different tiling on the glass. So the bell pepper looks so much weirder on the... <laughs> At least my blocks are happy. But if we take a closer look, you can still see the brick texture on these blocks. That's what the north texture does. The north thing, or normal map, is used for faking the light of bumps and dents. So let's make our own fake. Now, I don't really have a clue about normal maps, but they link to this website, and all I need to do is upload a picture of my texture and it will give me a normal map. For that, I need to export my image as a PNG though. Then we can go and upload the file, and we've got a north texture. Once we're done, we can just save the image, just drag it over, and I should have the cracks removed. And there we go, you can see the cracks are gone, I mean, for the most part. That's because I, um, didn't center the layer I pasted in correctly. So the ASG, which stands for Alpha Spec Glow and Reflectivity, pretty much controls just that. Anyway, this is a little bit more complicated, and I don't really understand all of this, uh, but we're just gonna find out. 
So let's start with the red channel, which should control the transparency of our texture. So I just messed with the red channel and I don't really see a difference, so I don't really have any idea what this does. So the green channel sets this peculiar level of the texture. So to do this I first turn everything to zero so it's pure black. Then I turn up the green channel to maximum. So now it's just green in it, but there's also the fourth channel, opacity. Which in this case I've turned down to one, so if I now paint something you can see a slight change in color. I just didn't want to make it so reflective, it literally burns my eyes if I look at it. Which we're gonna do later. So now let's just overwrite that bad boy and see how it looks in game. So it's like some kind of reflection thing and if you actually look at the top of the bell peppers, you can see it especially well here, you see there's like a slight glow at the top of them. It's because I of course didn't center the bell pepper correctly. So the blue channel makes the texture emissive and glowing. Oh, look at this! It's glowing. It kind of looks like a pumpkin block, not gonna lie. It really does look like a pumpkin block. Nice! Weirdly enough, I don't really notice anything on the glass blocks. And if we have a look at it at night, we can also see that the block is sort of glowing. So finally the alpha channel, which is just responsible for the reflection in general. It sure does look creepy. <laughs> it like literally glows because it's so reflective. Like if you look at it, it looks normal, but if you try to look away... <laughs> I like how the bell pepper looks green from one side, but if you actually look at it, it has this like metal coating on it. <laughs> anyway, that's all of the fun you can have with those textures. Now, we might want to see some actual icons in the inventory, and that's actually very easy fix. If we go back into the mod tool, you might remember this create icons function. If you click on this, some consoles open, which you can't see since it's on my other monitor. Um. But they'll just disappear after a while once the game is done generating all the icons. And would you look at that, we've got actual inventory icons. So the last thing we want to do before we publish a mod is add item names and descriptions. For this we need to go back into our mod folder, go to GY, language, inventory descriptions, example.txt. It's empty. <laughs> oh my god are the developers lazy. Anyway, let's hop into English. Here's an actual example we can use. Bam, look at it. Let's just copy that bad boy. And now we can open the actual JSON file. Then just yeet this in there and we're almost good to go. Open our blocks.json file again. Now all we need to do is just copy our IDs and paste them into the descriptions file. Now if we want to name the other part as well, we can just add a comma and paste all of this stuff. Down here again, we'll just need to find the second ID, maybe give it another name so you can actually see that it's two different items, and let's jump in game! And now if we take a look at items again, you can see the amazing Yo Mama blog, with this is an example description, and the example name this is an example description block. Alright, so now our mod is done, and we can finally ship it! It's gonna be kind of a weird and creepy mod though, but um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> so one thing we might want to do before we publish is go back into the mod folder and open preview.jpg. And as you can see, this is later gonna be the thumbnail in the workshop. So if we want to change the workshop thumbnail of a mod, we could just open this file with paint or something and add a mustache to our duck. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna look a little bit like a clown. Of course, we also need to tell people to like our mod. Um, that's why I'm adding the zombie arm up here. This does not make it better. Mm, oh, let's add a heart to it. Nobody can resist a heart. This is the best workshop thumbnail in the history, I promise you. Oh god, why am I even uploading this to with workshop? Just so you can copy paste my code if you have problems. Alright, we're ready. Let's upload the mod. Look at it, you can see my amazing thumb. Now I could just change the visibility to public and everyone could download my mod. So now you can go and earn a lot of Steam Awards to win a lot of useless points, which people waste on useless enemy girl profile backgrounds. Dude, I just wasted 2000 Steam points on this profile background. And I hate these backgrounds. But so what, I'm fucking rich. Now go and make your own mods so you can one day afford your own enemy girl backgrounds. Ah, Steam. <laughs> What a wondrous place sometimes. Finally, spent fucking three hours just recording this.